Minister, um, Deputy Minister, dear members of the Ministry of Basic Education, dear teachers in the audience, dear principals, dear education stakeholders, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure for us, Marcus and myself, to be here to present the international and the South African results of TALIS 2018 results report. As the main author of this report, together with one of the many authors of this report, my colleague uh, Marcus Schwaber, it's a real honor to be uh, in South Africa to uh, launch uh, a TALIS report for the first time from the African continent. I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate uh, the Ministry of Basic Education and also to thank their team uh, for their successful participation in TALIS, the OECD uh, survey. Uh, TALIS follows a lot of strict technical standards and I'm pleased to say that uh, South Africa was able to meet all of them. So it's a really successful participation from a technical perspective which shows that you have the capacity to participate in, in large-scale international surveys uh, such as TALIS. And I would like to thank the national team here for their great work to make this project happen. And also I'd like to thank the teachers and the school leaders who took the time to respond to our questionnaire. It's a great source of data in my view and so we can only be uh, thankful for uh, the time they spent uh, on this. So does that work? Um, maybe I should move it from here. Okay, so, so let me get started. I think now, by now you should know what TALIS means. Uh, TALIS stands for uh, the Teaching and Learning International Survey. At the OECD we conceive uh, TALIS as the voice of teachers and school leaders. We are collecting information from them on their environments, their work environments, uh, on their schools, on their classrooms. Um, I think you have already heard several times that it's not the first cycle TALIS uh, took place. In 20, 2018, 48 countries and economies all around the world took part in the survey. And for the first time, we have countries from all continents, thanks to the participation of your country. Uh, one uh, note is that uh, we administer TALIS to lower secondary education teachers and school leaders in all countries, that's the compulsory uh, uh, component of the survey. But countries are also, uh, uh, they can also opt for uh, other options, so they can administer the survey at the primary education level, at the upper secondary education level, and also they can administer the survey in the schools that participated in our PISA survey, which is a survey, which is an assessment of students' uh, performance. So if you want to be able to relate what teachers think about their jobs, what teachers think about their practices, their training and so on, to the actual results, the actual performance of, their, of the students, this is a way uh, to go about it, to administer the TALIS PISA link. So this is the current uh, map. Um, of all the, the, all the countries in red have participated uh, in the survey and you can see that now we have uh, a lot of countries participating in the South Hemisphere uh, included, so in, uh, South Africa being one of them now. And so we have a very important uh, worldwide cover because uh, 260,000 teachers in the world took part in the survey and they represent uh, more than 8 million teachers. And we have also surveyed their, their school heads. Uh, in South Africa, uh, these numbers were already uh, introduced to you. It's more than 2,000 2, teachers and 169 principals that participated in the survey. And they all together, they represent 92,000 teachers in your country at public, working at public and independent lower secondary schools. 
So that is uh, can also be seen as a way to uh, monitor your uh, country's uh, objectives to fulfill the sustainable development goals. Those goals are defined by uh, the United Nations and they were defined in September 2015. And in fact, some of the indicators we have in TALIS about teachers, namely whether uh, we can consider the teacher population as a as uh, uh, qualified uh, teachers and whether this um, supply of qualified teachers has increased, this type of indicators can be monitored through TALIS. So TALIS can be an instrument for countries to monitor their uh, sustainable, sustainable development goals. So now let me uh, present you the report. So after we have collected all these responses from the teachers and the school leaders to our questionnaire in all countries. We have uh, analyzed the data at the OECD and uh, we have uh, built the report around the concept of professionalism. We think this is key uh, to enhance the professionalism of teachers and school leaders. And for that, we have identified five pillars the knowledge and skills that teachers and school leaders need to have uh, on their job to perform efficiently, the career opportunities, rewarding career opportunities they are offered when they join the profession, so that's also an interesting pillar to leverage professionalism in the profession, then the opportunities they have to collaborate because we think collaboration is key to the success and the development of the profession, and whether they are given uh, leadership uh, and autonomy in their profession to take decisions on their own job, whether they are empowered as, an ag as agents of change to make, to do things better, uh, to really contribute to uh, the decision making at the school level, uh, to, to better assist with the, the learning of their students. And finally, we are also looking at the prestige of the profession, so how the profession is perceived uh, among uh, the society in general. So there are a lot, uh, uh, many pillars, five in total, but for volume one, so the report that we have just released, we focus on the first pillar. So you will know all <laughs> about the, the knowledge and skills dimension of, of teachers and school leaders' work. Uh, at, towards the end of this presentation, we'll try to give you a summary of the main findings for South Africa in comparison to uh, the OECD in particular um, and other, other countries participating in the, in the survey. And that's the cover of the OECD report. But the, the, the South African report has also been released today. And so this is also a great source of information for you to look at if you want to get the results better. Before I let my uh, colleague, uh, Marcus Schwaber, uh, walk you through some of the main findings of this report, I'm going to pause here uh, because I, I would like to show you uh, a first video that we've produced with 10 participating countries. Okay. As an educator, I understand that the world is not static but it changes, so should we, so that uh, we keep abreast of the developments around us. I think there's a move towards, I guess, from knowledge and rote learning into more skills-based learning and making sure that students have the skills that they need for what is increasingly, you know, not just working within a small group, but working on a worldwide level.
in vergelijking met de meerderheid van het bij ons nu, vooral opvalt dat leerlingen niet meer klassiek achter hun schoolbanken zitten. We proberen ook een nieuwe leerinhouden die niet alledaags zijn in de secundaire school te brengen. Ik denk bijvoorbeeld aan het vak Cleantech, waarbij we jongeren eigenlijk proberen bewust te maken van heel het klimaatproblematiek en de transitie naar een duurzame maatschappij. En anderzijds een vernieuwende methodiek in de zin van meer ervaringsgericht lesgeven. In taal ons, kwaders en therapieus, projectors, exercities interactief. The students get to collectively decide what they want to discover about a particular topic and based on that they are also um, having more interaction with their classmates rather than just a teacher-student interaction. Когда возникает какая-то новая идея о проведении нового урока, о внедрении что-то нового в урок, назначно я советую с своими коллегами, которые более опытные, чем я. La discutí con algunos compañeros de, de aula que compartimos, digamos, la misma asignatura. También hay algunos miembros informados en que los profesores conversan entre ellos eh, y debaten y discuten estrategias para determinada situación. Yo pienso que es muy importante que los profesores échangen entre ellos. Eso es práctico porque on peut vraiment euh, constituer une communauté de travail. So through my innovation in the classroom, I hope to inspire my students to think, work and live differently so that they'll be able to manage the challenges of tomorrow's world. Okay, so that, that was one of the three videos we produced um, together with 10 other countries and we were very happy to have South Africa participating again. You could see a, a, a South African teacher speaking in particular I think, at the beginning. And we want to, it's a way for us to celebrate the teachers uh, and also to give them a, a real voice, not only through the questionnaire but also on the screen to really hear from concrete examples and, and inspiring um, work they are doing. Um, so, um, <laughs> we have a technical problem, excuse us. Um, Schreiber, who will uh, walk you through the main results 
And uh, I then conclude with some specific challenges for South Africa and some policy recommendations. Um, hello. Just so that you can hear me properly. Okay. Uh, who are the teachers and principals? Uh, greatest question, kind of uh, in Thales. Uh, teachers are people who join the profession to make a difference. A difference uh, to influence the development of children and young people. Are teaching, um, they said, teaching a lot, which provide a contribution to society. More than 90% of teachers reported this across the OECD as well as in South Africa. Also in South Africa, which is uh, particularly striking, teaching offered a steady career path which has been cited by 90% of teachers, which is much higher than at the, across the OECD. When I mean across the OECD, it's meaning also as the average of OECD countries having, and economies having participated in TALIS. Um, however, in South Africa, teaching was the first choice of only half of the teachers in South Africa, which is the lowest values across all countries having participated in TALIS. As you see, the OECD average shows a value of 66%, two-thirds of teachers. And, um, and this is the motivation to become a teacher it's uh, not only a statistics, it matters really for the later education, it matters for lifelong learning. As, you, as we have found out, in nearly all countries, teachers who are more invested in the social mission of the profession report greater commitment and tend to participate more often in professional development activities, as well as teachers for whom teaching was their first choice as a career, feel also more confident in their teaching ability and satisfied with their job. And this, for the statisticians and us, it's also even after controlling for teachers' characteristics. Then, um, as what is the teaching workforce about? What is the age uh, distribution? In general, is I see there is something changed in the slide now. <laughs> Okay, just continue. In general, um, the, the age distribution is quite uh, equal in South Africa. 90% are aged from 30 to 49 year olds. However, about 25% uh, are above 50 and they will uh, retire in, in a decade or so on. And this already we think about this now just to renew the teaching staff just to keep the capacity just to keep the capacity at the level that it's currently. The principals are slightly older um, than the teachers. I don't go into the details now. Um, then also we looked at the gender distribution among teachers in South Africa. You can nothing see, I see. Uh, sorry, can this be fixed? I, I see that the charts are not properly shown on, on the screens. Okay. Um, in South Africa, I just summarize: sixty percent of female uh, of teachers are female. Across uh, the world, there's a general feminization of the teaching workforce, uh, except of Japan. More than fifty percent of teachers are female. And we also looked at what is uh, the, um, equal, uh, the percentage of female teachers among principals. Is there an equal chair? Are there also 60% uh, of uh, female principals in South Africa? No, this is not the case. There are only 20% uh, uh, women among principals. As you know, we have also the national report, and we, we picked up some, some figures uh, across uh, South African provinces. The data has been compiled uh, by uh, the ministry. And um, sorry, now I'm just okay. There's a wide range of uh, disparities uh, across uh, Af South African provinces. It's, um, for instance, ranging from the Northern Cape province. Uh, the percentage of female principals is only five percent. However, here in Johannesburg, in the province of Gauteng, it's almost fifty percent, exactly forty-five percent female principals. You see, even within a country, there's a wide 
variation of uh, local contexts. Moving on, what does it mean for uh, kind of policy advice? In the OECD view, uh, there's a recruitment issue. Yeah? Uh, one point is we may design effective recruitment campaigns to encourage both men and women to join the ranks of profession. This can be done by portraying teachers and principals as the key contributors to society and also praise rewarding aspects like the possibility to continually learn on the job. Also the job security which has been raised by many teachers as an important factor and the work-life balance. Also the question is what are the reasons why women are underrepresented among principals? Are these opportunities to grow into leadership or is it a self-selection effect? further research may be needed and to apply the appropriate policy measures. Also reinforce accessibility to initial teacher education and training. Uh, this is uh, also quite important measure. Moving on to the classroom environment, what uh, does it look like for teachers? What is uh, the day-to-day context of teachers in South Africa. As you can see uh, badly here, 34% uh, um, of principals report that they are at their school, at least weekly, they occurred intimidation and bullying among students, which is the highest value across all countries participating in TALIS. As you see, compared to this, the OECD average is only 14%. Uh, safe school safety incidents are not only more frequent in South Africa, they are also have more diverse forms than elsewhere. For instance, we have the uh, second highest uh, uh, figure is about 27% uh, uh, of school principals who report that there's an issue of drug uh, 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 use, uh, possession and use in the schools, and 20% uh, say there's a um, uh, um, so vandalism, sorry, <laughs> vandalism theft at their schools. As you can see, it in as our city countries, this uh, this is a really minor negligible situation. Um, how does it affect in the general? Uh, is it reflected in the general school environment? Um, generally teachers trust in their students. They say they believe that students' well-being is important. And also, um, across the OECD, teachers and students usually, usually get well with, on with, with each other. Almost 100% all of them agree to this. However, there's a big gap between the OECD average and South Africa. In South Africa, the share who is saying this is only 85%. The same issue, if I go further down to the different items, uh, teachers, can they rely on each other? Almost 90% of teachers agree on this across OECD. However, also the share in South Africa is much lower, by about 50 percentage points. 82% only agree to this statement. What could be done? In the view of the OECD, um, there could be a could implement a system and school level policies and practices to combat all, all forms of bullying, theft and use possession of drugs. For instance, monitoring and supervision of all students, communication and partnership among teachers, parent-teacher meetings and classroom management. System level policies could be also applied like establishing a code of conduct for students to combat bullying, theft and use of possession of drugs as a national priority and developing monitoring frameworks. For sure, you all of you know much better than the OECD what the concrete problems are and maybe what are the right policy measures to be chosen. What do they do, teachers, concretely in their classroom? As you know, what happens in the classroom, the teaching practices they are used, this has uh, the most important impact on student learning outcomes. Therefore, we ask about these questions. For instance, um, oh, sorry, right. uh, we have uh, different areas, for instance, classroom management, uh, what means tell students to follow classroom rules, tell students to listen to what I say, 
to give some uh, examples. Then more really to, to the instruction related uh, activities. It's uh, applied to instruction, explain to students what I expect them to learn, explain how new and old topics are related, for instance. Then also uh, in regard of the 21st century skills, cognitive activation practices like uh, um, give tasks that require students to think critically. This is a, a really new area. How often is this practice? On average of the OECD countries, it's uh, 58%. And then also the new area of digitalization. Let students use ICT for projects or classwork. It's used in, in, on average of OECD countries in about, by about half of teachers. Situation in South Africa looks uh, different, different in a positive way, as you see. All these uh, teaching practices, classroom management, the quality of instruction, are much higher than across the OECD. And especially um, giving teachers give tasks that recognize, uh, sorry, that require students to think critically. It's, uh, it's reported by 83% of, teacher, of teachers. However, as you may uh, no, um, let students use ICT for projects or classwork. It's only used by 38% uh, of teachers, which for sure also uh, uh, one of the reasons is a uh, so resource shortage in this area, but we will come to this back later. How much time actually teachers spend on uh, teaching and learning? As you can see, South Africa is on the the white uh, side of the, the ranking, country ranking in a way, and only two thirds of time uh, of, of, their, of classroom time will spend on, act, on teaching and learning. This is uh, much lower. Uh, on average of OECD countries, 78%. Uh, and as you can see, uh, there are other countries like Russia, Vietnam, Estonia, up to almost 90% of classroom time are spent on teaching and learning. More can be done. However, what, what, what are South African teachers doing with their time, with their remaining time, let's say? Uh, in fact, it's disputing keeping order in the classroom, <laughs> which for sure reflects what we just said. And also, they do a lot of uh, administrative stuff, which is especially this administrative stuff, it's uh, much, much lower in other, in other countries. I also looked at the national report, how does it vary across uh, uh, South African provinces and um, in terms of uh, teaching hours, uh, South African teachers uh, work, um, uh, I mean, on, spend on actual teaching learning about 27 hours and uh, there's a wide variety across South African provinces. I hope I pronounce it well in Kwasula, Name, Durban. It's uh, 22 hours, and in the free state, the highest value is 32 hours. You see, there's a really a, a huge uh, range of uh, provincial situations. Then, uh, also, what is to highlight teaching time uh, on, or time on actual teaching and learning depends also on the local context of the school, not only provincial wide, but also. Uh, on the concentration of students from socio-economically disadvantaged homes. And uh, in South Africa, there's a difference of uh, six percentage points uh, that in schools with a high concentration of, socio -economic, uh, of students from socio-economically disadvantaged homes, uh, teaching time is fewer by six percentage points, or which equals three minutes of teaching times. And you just sum it up uh, over so, uh, whole school years, and then you see it, it can be enormous. What could be done? Yeah, teachers could be supported in the use of effective teaching practices. Initial and continuous teacher learning in effective teaching practices could foster the use of pedagogy related to cognitive activation. Promote small group instructions to optimize classroom time. Set up classroom space in a way that is conducive to more individualized and active learning approaches. We know that the classroom sizes in South Africa are much bigger than across the OECD. Maybe this is the last point is maybe not so much applicable to the South African context. And then also, what do the principals in this context? What is their role? Uh, how much time do they spend on, 
on a, a curriculum and teaching related tasks and meetings instead of just administration, for instance. In South Africa, it's a good news. Uh, they spend 30% of their time on instructional related activities and even they would like to do more. 40% of them report a shortage of time for instructional leadership, which is a really a good, good thing and uh, this would be further developed. Uh, sorry. And uh, to develop this further, yeah, ensure that school leaders uh, have adequate time and support to develop their leadership in the field of curriculum and teaching, and also that uh, clear professional standards for school leaders are developed, for instance, to stress really the importance and expectations for, of instructional leadership. Also, when recruiting uh, uh, leaders, principals among teachers, yeah, uh, assure that you recruit the instructional leadership, those uh, leaders, those with the potential for this. Training in instructional leadership would be viewed as a, should be viewed as a prerequisite for school leaders prior to taking up their duties. School leaders need to be given more opportunities to participate in communities of practice and collaborative inquiries with their peers. But are they prepared, the teachers, when they arrive at the school? When we look at this uh, distribution of the education attainment levels, we, we can see that three out of four teachers in South Africa typically hold a diploma or bachelor's degrees. In terms of formal education attainment, they are quite uh, well qualified. Although in, in many other countries, uh, teachers have attained a bachelor's level or higher. The, typicals, typic, uh, sorry, the principals typically hold a higher degree uh, I don't go into the details. And, uh, but what maybe matters even more, uh, which elements are included in the initial education and training? Uh, as you can see, in, in most, um, now the first slide is about the OECD average, uh, content of some or all subjects taught is included in their professional training. Uh, also, I would like to highlight student behavior and classroom management is also included in the professional training. This is uh, raised by the blue bar. Then you see the orange bar. bar. Uh, there, there you can see um, do, how they feel about their preparation. And how is their preparedness? And you see the preparedness or the feeling of the preparedness self-reported by teachers is much lower across the OECD compared to the level of inclusion in their initial education and training. Now it's a picture for South Africa. You see there's a nice match. Preparedness with the percentage of uh, teachers being trained in this area uh, uh, have equal levels. Maybe let me point out this uh, perhaps uh, one most striking point is uh, student behavior and classroom management. Uh, for 93 percent of teachers, it was included in their professional training, but the preparedness is slightly lower, only 82 percent feel well prepared for, for this element. What can help to uh, the teachers are prepared to, or to prepare teachers for their job? One, one element is uh, pa teachers' participation in induction which is higher in South Africa than in the OECD. The chart shows the opposite, those who have not participated in any induction activities. It's uh, in South Africa only half of the teachers, whereas um, in most other countries, having participated in TALIS, it's much higher, and on average of, o of the OECD, it's almost two out of three teachers having not participated in an induction uh, activity. Uh, further analysis has shown that participation in induction is positively related to self-efficacy in many countries. Um, in many countries, in South Africa, there's no statistical relationship, uh, but for sure we still think that uh, it's, it's helpful for, uh, to be prepared for the further job. Um, also another measure of helping teacher to... Uh, what, I cannot see any country name, sorry for this. 
Uh, okay, I just have to tell you. Um, uh, one measure is uh, it's reduced teaching load could be more often included in induction. Uh, reduced teaching load is, uh, in general, it's a quite uh, less frequently uh, um, applied measure. In, on OECD average, only 21% of teachers had a, a reduced teaching load as an induction measure, and in South Africa it's uh, slightly higher. Also, uh, uh, team teaching, I would like to highlight this, team teaching with an experienced teacher. This is something which is often applied in South Africa, 77% in South Africa, South African teachers report that, team che that they had team teaching with experienced teachers. On average of OECD countries, it's only 45%. In this sense, South Africa is really on a very good way to prepare teachers for their job. Um, I skipped this chart. Then um, also another measure is mentoring of, um, of teachers, and in particular novice teachers. Uh, school te leaders uh, have recognized the importance, and in South Africa 86% say uh, that they um, support less experienced teachers in their teaching, and uh, whereas in the OECD it's only 77%. And if you look at uh, the, the chart, now you can see everything, this is good. You see South Africa on the left the side, uh, it's one of, one of the countries with the highest percentage of teachers who had an assigned mentor as a part of a formal arrangement, arrangement at the school. It's in South Africa almost 40%, and among novice teachers is really one out of two teachers who had an assigned mentor. So comparative, comparative, comparable OECD average is only one out of five teachers. Then um, the school leaders, how are they prepared for their role? Only half of school leaders have received specialized training before taking up their role. This is uh, comparable between South Africa and the OECD countries. Yeah, what could be done to improve the situation? So I know South Africa many items performs already quite well. First of all, provide, provide high quality initial educational training. Ensure that all teachers are equipped with sufficient training in the content, pedagogy, and classroom practice of the subjects they teach. Establish rigorous accreditation institutions monitoring the work of teachers, education providers. Possibility, for instance, including fast track providers. Also establishing teacher st teaching standards that define precisely what is required and expected of teachers when they enter training and when they are ready to start teaching. This is more for the teachers. Okay. Um, but once you are in the job, how do teachers keep up to date? How often did they participate in any professional development activities in the 12 months prior to the survey? As you can see, South Africa is on the right side in this, uh, this um, context. It means they uh, participate less frequently than in most other countries and economies participating in TALIS. However, still 90% report they, that they have participated in uh, professional development activity. And, um, Impactful. Uh, does it help? Have the teachers the feeling it's, it's useful? And uh, this is quite a positive thing to report um, that 88% of teachers find that the professional development activity had a positive impact on their teaching practices, which also then has an impact on the student learning outcomes. Yeah, we, we never have, cannot, we have to keep it in mind, which is much higher than on average of OECD countries. Uh, which type of professional activities are in particular uh, impactful? First of all, it's for sure that it's built on the teacher's prior knowledge and it's uh, adapted to the teacher's personal development needs, which is uh, cited by about 90% in South Africa and also across OECD. 
but Parama in particular would like to highlight uh, this, uh, these two points. It provided follow-up activities, yeah, which is uh, a strength in, in the Southern African professional development system, reported by 90%. And uh, on, on, at the OECD, uh, on average of the OECD, only by 60%. And also it took place as an, uh, at an extended period of time. Let's say longer trainings are perceived as more effective than shorter trainings, which is reported in South Africa by 90% of teachers. Of teachers, and the need uh, is uh, formulated by 30% of teachers. You see, there's a kind of gap between the perceived need, let's say, and the, the participation. Then, also, one area, area uh, where there's kind of more alignment between the need and the participation. Teaching students with special needs in South Africa, 34% have participate in such a training, and the need is 39%, uh, much higher than, uh, than the participation. There may be more to be done. Then training in a multicultural and or multilingual setting, which is uh, in the Af South African context very important. Uh, it was included for ha half of uh, South African teacher teachers, and the need was perceived by 20% of teachers. Also related to this communication with people from different cultures or countries has a kind of similar similar pattern. You may think why they don't participate more and what are therefore we have to ask what are the barriers to participation in professional development. And um, one most striking point in a way is uh, there are no incentives for participating in professional development. And this share is 57% uh, in South Africa, slightly higher or higher than on average of OECD countries. We could say almost two out of three te teachers, I'm exaggerating, uh, uh, has no in feels no incentives. Then this is related. The so next point, the lack, there's a lack of employer support which is also raised by one out of two teachers in South Africa, whereas in, across the OECD it's only one out of three teachers who has this uh, reported this barrier. We have also asked this question on barriers uh, among principals. Um, the pattern looks quite similar, therefore I, I skipped this slide. What can be done to, uh, to foster professional development activities and participation? First of all, it's a time issue. Allow time to participate in professional development. Offer school embedded professional development as an integral part of work. Create or foster more in incentives to participate in professional development. For, for, uh, for instance, earmarked funds allocated to schools to invest in professional development activities. Recognition for participation in professional development. Just uh, real world to have a rec recognizing system. Offer professional development activities adjusted to teachers and school leaders' needs. Uh, before I'm, I will pass the word now over to Noemi Ledoné, who will present you some particular challenges more in detail. Thank you, Marcus. So to conclude this presentation, I'll, I would like to shed some light on some uh, specific challenges for South Africa. Uh, but in fact, the results I'm going to present, they are highly influenced by the European context, in a way, because if we have asked uh, so many questions in our questionnaire about uh, student diversity, it was at the request of the European Commission, and so that's why we have included uh, student diversity as a cross-cutting theme throughout the, the questionnaire. So we constantly ask teachers about how they are prepared to teach a diverse classroom. And what we mean by diversity can vary a lot from one country to the other. 
And I think that in the case of South Africa, actually, there were two dimensions that were particularly uh, interesting and discriminant. So we have asked uh, both teachers and also school leaders about the makeup of their classrooms and their schools, and this chart is based on principals' responses about the composition of their classroom, of their school, sorry. And, uh, and as uh, you can see on this chart, there are two dimensions that stand out for South Africa. One is the linguistic diversity you have in your schools, because 60% uh, of teachers work in schools with more than 10% of students uh, having a first uh, language which is different from the language of his instruction. So 60% of teachers work in schools that are linguistically diverse. And this is to be compared to about 20% on average in the OECD. So that's, that's uh, the reality of your schools and classrooms. And the second dimension that is also striking is the fact that 70%, uh, actually 70%, 1% of teachers work in schools with more than 30% of students coming from socioeconomically disadvantaged homes. We provided a definition to teachers and school leaders when, uh, when we asked them to respond to that question. So uh, what we define as a socioeconomically disadvantaged home is typically uh, a home that lacks, uh, that doesn't show adequate uh, housing, uh, no, uh, not adequate um, uh, nutrition, so nutrition issues and potentially also medical issues. So it's, it's a signal that uh, probably South Africa ranks among the, the poorest countries, but it can also be in our survey, but it can also be the case that there is high uh, social segregation as well with these students concentrated in in some of the schools, but still 70% of teachers work in schools with at least 30% of students that they qualified as relatively poor. So that's that, those are the two dimensions, and the three other dimensions, so having refugees, having students with special needs, having immigrant students are less of a concern, and to get back to what I was saying about the European Commission, for the European Commission, what was in, and which led us to include a lot of questions on this topic was more the influx of migrants in Europe. So, in fact, it was interesting to still ask other questions because I think in the South African context, uh, the, linguistical, the linguistic aspects is very relevant. So I'm glad I can present these results today to you. Uh, we have asked uh, school leaders if they implement practices related to diversity in their schools. And here you can see that actually uh, there is a high prevalence of multiculturalism, multiculturalist pr uh, practices in the schools because South Africa ranks higher than the OECD on average on all, on all these topics. So school leaders tell us that 80% of school leaders tell us that yes, they have practices that include teaching how to deal with ethnic and cultural discrimination. They have, they have also activities and they have some arrangements to encourage students' expression of ethnic and cultural identities. Here, South Africa ranks much higher than the OECD and they also organize multicultural events, much more than other, in other countries. And I think it tells about the the spirit, the, the fact that multiculturalism is probably uh, a reality for uh, a long time in South Africa and that in fact in European countries which have faced uh, recent immigration, it's not as, uh, as frequent as in, in, uh, in South Africa to have all these practices in place. So in fact maybe we could borrow from your practices uh, in Europe, I think. Uh, we also asked teachers how, uh, to what extent they felt prepared to teach a multilingual uh, classroom when they finished their studies. And you can see that 67% uh, of them said that they were prepared for that challenge. 
uh, in South Africa, so it's a high percentage in comparison to other countries, and but that's also a country where teachers face this situation much more frequently than in other countries. So this is quite encouraging, I think, and it's quite good news. But still, there is still a third of teachers when that say that they don't feel prepared when they start on the job. So we need to see the positives in that and also the negatives. So what can we do to support this third of teachers that don't feel prepared for that challenge when they are starting their job as a teacher? So the previous slide was about how the teachers felt when they finished their studies. This slide is about how teachers feel now when they answer the survey. And you can see that teachers feel quite confident in teaching a multicultural, multicultural class. So to the extent that by multicultural, we also cover uh, yeah, uh, a multilingual class. But it's good to see that uh, many teachers in South Africa feel that they can ensure that, uh, uh, that they can adapt their teaching to the cultural diversity of students. They can cope with the challenges of a multicultural classroom and so on. The remember from the first slide I showed you about the two striking dimensions in terms of student diversity. One was the linguistic diversity, but the second one was the fact that many teachers work in schools enrolling poor students. So we have also asked uh, school leaders to what extent they put in place practices that uh, relate to equity and try to foster equity. Uh, it can be implemented by the school at the school level, but also at the national level. And so this is also encouraging news that 85% of school leaders report that in their school there is additional support available for students from disadvantaged backgrounds compared to 80% in the OECD. So I think this is the sign that in South Africa this equity issue is taken seriously. And uh, also there are some explicit policies against gender discrimination uh, that also are reported to be uh, frequently implemented in, in schools by school leaders. And if you can remember what Marcus showed about the feminization of the, of the profession and especially of the principal workforce, it's also good to hear that students Today, in the schools in South Africa, they are exposed to, this, uh, to these policies combating uh, gender discrimination, and maybe in a few years from now, we'll see more female teachers, potentially, if that's an issue of you know, uh, providing opportunities to women also to, uh, to grow into the profession. So it's uh, actually good, good, good news also for future generations of teachers and other professions. So what else can you do in this respect uh, and your countries do? Well, you, there is still some capacity probably to be built for teachers and school leaders to meet the needs of diverse classrooms and schools, especially from the linguistic point of view. So you could incorporate uh, teaching strategies for diverse settings in the curricula of both initial and continuous uh, teacher training. One option for your country is to design campaigns, uh, recruitment campaigns that could attract teachers from different backgrounds, from different ethnic communities, from different linguistic communities, uh, because teachers play as role models also for their students, and uh, they will master one of the language, well, oh, it would be good to have teachers that master all the languages present in the school, of course if every student can speak in its own language to uh, at least one teacher in the school, that would be fantastic, I guess. Uh, so you could also train teachers to, uh, in, to, uh, to master some pedagogical approaches for second language learning. Again, we think that collaboration is key, so teaming up teachers that are more experienced with teachers which are, who are less experienced and have them teach to, together a multilingual uh, classroom so that each other can learn from each other and, uh, and maybe pairing teachers from different uh, linguistic communities also could be, a, could be a good idea. So 
just to give you uh, uh, some policy pointers, you can also, uh, well, uh, we have also these uh, recommendations about the support of special education needs students. This is a dimension that was uh, uh, reported by teachers as uh, an important area for, for training. They would like to get more training in this respect. At the same time, we also see that not so many teachers report facing uh, teaching a lot of special education needs students, so I have these recommendations on the slides, but we can get back later to that during the discussion, maybe if that's of interest to you. So finally, uh, before I conclude with some a recap of the policy recommendations, we have also as teachers and school leaders what they think their government should do, and uh, it's, uh, it's interesting to be here at the, with, in the presence of colleagues from the Ministry of Education to be able to present that result to you as well because you will probably be interested in knowing if you don't already know from the field. Uh, but it's interesting to remember that it's a representative sample of school leaders and, and teachers. So what did they tell us? Principles told us that uh, the priority uh, is to invest um, in materials, resource materials. So the number one priority is uh, investing in library uh, materials, followed by digital technology for instruction and then access to internet. But they all, and also physical infrastructure because 56% of, uh, of school leaders um, reported uh, a shortage of physical infrastructure hindering the delivery of quality instruction in their, in their school. They also report shortage of support personnel in particular, 60% of them. You can see on that chart that in comparison to the OECD, school leaders in South Africa uh, made a lot of claims. Uh, so it could be that I don't know, school leaders like to complain a lot in South Africa, but I think it could also be uh, a signal that there are some important issues and shortages to, uh, to consider and to remedy to. We also ask teachers a, a slightly different question. We ask them if the, if the budget for education were, were to increase by 5%, what would be the area on which you would spend it? And in South Africa, like in any other uh, country, at least in the OECD, the first two priorities are reducing class sizes by recruiting more staff and improving teacher salaries. I'd like to raise your attention to to draw your attention to the fact that there are two other priorities that were highly reported by uh, teachers in South Africa, which are offering high quality professional development and reducing teachers' administration loads by recruiting more support staff. We, to finish, to conclude on the results, I'd like to focus on the necessity, according to teachers, to reduce class sizes to shed some more lights on these aspects based on our data. So are, are teachers sensible when they're asking this? <laughs> and we looked at the two indicators of teachers' quantity in the, in the schools in South Africa in comparison to the OECD average. And so if you consider the number of students per teacher in a school, on average, in South Africa, there are 31 students per teacher in a given school. And in the OECD, it's 12 students per teacher. So there are more teachers in an average OECD school, much more, many more teachers than in South Africa. Again, when you look at class size, uh, 41 students per class in South Africa on average at lower secondary education compared to 24 on average in the OECD. So it seems that teachers are sensible in South Africa. And I'd like to add to uh, that that um, uh, if a teacher teaches a large class size, that teacher is also uh, uh, more likely to report uh, reducing class size as a spanning priority. So the larger the classes they teach, 
the more likely they are also to uh, report this as a priority. That's the case almost everywhere. I mean, you can see the, these blue bars everywhere, apart in a few countries. But, I mean, South Africa is, uh, is uh, among all other countries in facing that situation. So, I have only two more slides to recap the implications of our results for, in terms of educational policy for your country. Um, we think that the number one priority is to review the, the budget uh, spent on education and its allocation. We, we are fully aware that budget is not, uh, I mean, cannot increase at, you know, upon request. So maybe there are things that can be done on allocating the, that budget within the different uh, spending areas. So we think that the priority should be given to uh, investing in school buildings and facilities, as well as in quality uh, learning materials. Uh, this may have an impact actually on the, on the class size uh, so we think that it's probably the number one investment to, uh, to do. Um, of course, teachers uh, has reported the need to reduce class size by, by recruiting more teachers, but maybe we need to give them first the space to have these uh, reduced class sizes and then recruit uh, more teachers, more support staff, if budget allows, of course. One thing that could be done is to review the administrative burden of teachers and school leaders. Uh, we know that teachers have to spend a lot of time on administrative things uh, when they teach during their classroom. So what can be done here to spend more time on teaching and less time on admin uh, in the classroom? Same for school leaders that like to, do, to spend more time on instructional related tasks. Can we review are there some administrative tasks that we could consider dropping or, I don't know, making more efficient so that they have to spend less time on that. Second point is to improve the school safety uh, in, your, in the schools in South Africa to foster student learning and well-being. Um, probably, again, again, investing in school buildings can help uh, because we know that there is a high rate of vandalism, theft. If, if, uh, if students are enrolled in you know, new schools, maybe they will uh, be more respectful, etc., uh, etc. Et we, we also know that maybe uh, students bring some of the violence uh, that there is in, in, uh, in the overall society to school. So it's not only a, an issue for the education system, but, uh, but also for the society as a whole. But what can be done in addition to that is to implement uh, policies and practices to combat uh, bullying, uh, theft, use and possession of drugs, so prevention campaigns and so on, information campaigns and so on. And then, but I think this is the third priority on your policy agenda, is to uh, strengthen the initial and continuous training of teachers and school leaders and address the needs. I'm saying that because we have the feeling looking at the Talis results that teachers feel relatively well prepared um, so that's why we don't think uh, the emphasis should be put on that. Although there are still more, more to be done, of course. You could review the content and the duration of initial teacher preparation. You could review the offer in terms of type and content for professional development activities and make sure both in initial and continuous trainings important needs are addressed such as teaching uh, diverse classrooms in terms of the linguistic background of the students, helping teachers to use ICT in an efficient way in their classrooms, etc., etc. And finally, you can do more to uh, create incentives and support to, uh, for teachers and school leaders to participate in professional development. Participation in professional development can be taken into account for the career evolution of, uh, of teachers and school leaders, for instance. Once they have participated in a given training in a, in a given area, they could be given more responsibilities in that area where now they have certified skills. So those are ideas. Uh, thank you very much for having us. 
it's a real honor for us to uh, be here to present the, the results. We are looking forward to discuss them with you because you know much more about your context than we do. Uh, and so we hope to learn a lot from you and, and discuss the results with you. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much uh, to Dr. Donay and Dr. Schwab. So we'll immediately then begin getting reaction. I think part of what that report has done is provide a sobering view of where we are as a country. But of course, there have also been some silver linings. The one thing it does tell us, though, is I think some information about the state of our communities, the role of violence in schools, the impact of poverty and inequality, issues around gender parity and how they find expression within the school management system, a lovely conversation on diversity, and also important insights on how the system can be improved, what we can do to be better. So to give us more reaction then, I'm going to invite Mugwena Maluleke, who is the Vice President of Education International Africa. And of course, he was elected to that post in 2015. EI is a global union federation of teachers and education employees representing more than 30 million members. Mr. Maluleke is a member of the Council of the VAL University of Technology and also of the Human Resources Development Council of South Africa. He's the General Secretary of the South African Democratic Teachers Union and a former maths teacher and principal. Please help me welcome him on stage. so much uh, for, of course, the short introduction and not the obituary. <laughs> um, I know that uh, Schwab is a statistician, uh, so am I. I. I think so. I can add two plus two. <laughs> uh, Minister uh, Musecha, uh, Deputy Minister Haule, and all MECs present here, and our DG, uh, Dr. Mweli, um, basic education DDG Patayaki, uh, who did the welcoming here, and all the other officials of the Department of Education, and our colleagues, um, Dr. Schwab and uh, Lidone, um, organized lab labor, labor present here today, and distinguished guests, and all protocols observed. Um, I was given 15 minutes, so I've just agreed uh, with uh, Dr. Mflanga that I will try to cut as much as I can uh, in, in, in presenting the, the, the global perspective and or commentary from Education International. So that is what I'm going to try to do today, uh, Minister. I always, I'm, I'm always inspired by how you are always very brief when you address uh, us all the time. So I, I try to learn to do that. So I'm going to do that. So I'm deleting the introduction, uh, so, so the minutes must not count. <laughs> so I, 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 I then put my timer, uh, Mr. Clark, so that you and I don't fight. So let's congratulate South Africa, clearly, uh, for participating in the TALIS for 2018, um, and for the good report that has been presented here today. Uh, but also let's you know, congratulate our colleagues for coming to South Africa and for the work that we have done through this uh, social dialogue that is very, very important, um, which you have given the voice to the teachers um, to 
tell us exactly what are the problems and what they think could be the solutions, which is very, very critical uh, for the government and the, and, and, and the government and the department uh, included here. It's, it's very, very important because things are changing. And interestingly, it is that even the IMF, that we always regard as trade unions at global level, as being so conservative about social dialogue today, they're talking about social dialogue, that we need to improve the democracy in our institution, let the democracy not end at the gate, but it must continue uh, so that we are then able to listen to each other. So from the perspective or the commentary from Education International, we note first quickly that this is half of the results and i think that is very critical that i must i must emphasize that because in 2020 then uh, in march there will be a full um a volume two uh, report um which will then be able to tell us uh, clearly what uh, are the real issues in our schools so basically it is going to assist us between all the outcomes of the survey it will not be possible until then uh, to make connection between teacher demographics, I think, classroom climate, and teacher well-being and the stress. Uh, we can only be able to do that and have that correlation once that report is, is presented. Nevertheless, the report provides a number of insights, and I think you have been listening to the presenters. The main motivation for students uh, going into teaching is to make a difference to the lives uh, of children and young people. And I think that is very important, uh, that having been motivated to make a difference is, uh, uh, is very, um, uh, very important. But also, uh, the OECD backs a highly trained and qualified teaching profession. And indeed, it warns against government taking some fast track or short.